Hey friends, Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It's Friday. It's a little bit before our, well actually it's quite a bit before our normal time that we would be doing our daily devotion, but Margaret and I have to go north of the river to do some work up at our storage unit, so I'm going to go ahead and post this a little bit early today. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, quick things. I uh, want to remind you that this is our daily devotion. All are welcome to it. If you join, leave a quick comment. Let me know you're present. Would appreciate you doing that. Um, if you watch this later in the day, also want to remind you to leave a quick comment and let me know that you stopped by for our devotion time. When we conclude, if you'd like to repost this on your or share this on your Facebook page, we would encourage you to do that as well. It's a simple devotion time with some prayer, reading of scripture, the daily devotion, and a few moments of reflection. And so we'll take a moment to do that. I'm going to go ahead and begin. Some of you may join. You might see that I'm on a little early and you may join like Marie Hearn. <laughs> Hi, Marie. But we're going to go ahead and get started and do our devotion time and then um, certainly encourage folks as they get a chance to stop by and do so. Here's our opening prayer. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Our scripture reading comes out of James chapter 4, verses 13 to 17. James chapter 4, verses 13 to 17. Look here, you who say, Today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know that your life will how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It is here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise you are boasting about your own plans, and all such boasting is evil. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Our focus, uh, or our devotion writer today is Andre de Albuquerque Cayento. Cayento. He is from Brazil, something like that. Um, so Spanish was not my first language, as you all well know. So his uh, focus verse is Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, which says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And here is the devotion. Long before our children were born, my wife and I started to make plans for their lives. These expectations, hopes, and fears seem to be a big part of parenting. We have wondered, will our children be good students and professionals? Are they going to keep loving God? Will the world be hard on them? Sometimes we worry more than pray for them, forgetting that we are all children of the same Creator. For instance, my wife and I were anxious about our daughter's future plans as she neared high school graduation. We envisioned her going to college or doing a short international exchange or working for a year before going back for more schooling. But then COVID-19 spread around the world and our plans fell apart. Going to college was not an option and neither was traveling. We turned to God, praying and reading scripture together. The uncertainty of the pandemic has forced us to look to God and remember that the Almighty love, Almighty's love never fails. We find comfort in God's words. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Our God is all powerful. So the thought for the day is, I will put my plans in God's hands. Um, I think that's, a, I, I, I love the sentiment of it. Uh, easier said than done for almost all of us. I think probably because uh, for many of us, we just simply go about our routines and our day. And we find ourselves focused on the things that are on our agenda. Things that we need to get accomplished. Things that we want to do. We do the same when it comes to even like future plans and things like that. You know, uh, Margaret and I are, are a few years still away from retirement, uh, probably at the earliest 67, maybe more like somewhere between 67 and 70 will be when I retire from ministry. So we're still a few years away from that. And so it seems a little frivolous to try to make plans now, even though 
you make strategic plans around that. Uh, you know, we work with uh, um, Ernst and Young folks through our employment assistance program in West Path to think about what it will mean to maximize Social Security and our uh, benefits and all those kinds of things. You gotta gotta be on top of that because you are thinking about and you are planning for the future, hoping that you make it there. Right? Hoping that God extends my life that long, that my body doesn't give out in some way, and that I don't succumb to some kind of disease, or neither does Margaret in the next, you know, five or six years or so that we still have, and that we'll get to enjoy retirement, and we'll get to live, you know, 20 or so more years or, or more, and be able to enjoy a good part of that. But those are plans that we make. And life is a vapor. And we keep praying that maybe God will bring us to those moments because we'd like to see our grandchildren grow up and get married and have their own children um, and things like that. So you make plans. How often, though, do we kind of just check in, maybe? Not that, we're, not that we are completely devoid of God in our lives and not that we are completely leaning on God for every single thing, because I'm not sure there's actually a person that really does that, that consults God on every single little decision that they make in their life. But somewhere there's a balance in those things. And where is it that we're engaging God in the things that, that we know that we should be doing and, and the things that we um, are encouraged to do and the things that, that bring love and goodness to the world and and how do we consult God about those things and, and ask for God's power and, and for God's spirit to lead us? Or how much of it is just simply our focus on our own agenda? And in trying to live maybe in the dualism of that and marry the two together, rather than it be an either or, you never consult God for anything or you always consult God for all things, how do we have that balance between the important things where we're talking with God and we're praying over and we're seeking God's counsel and how much of life is just simply mundane enough? We'll make it through. God really doesn't care, I think, what you have for breakfast. Unless you're eating really unhealthy. But, you know, those kinds of things. You don't need to consult God about what pair of, of shorts you're going to wear that day or what shoes you're going to wear or how you're going to comb your hair or any of those kinds of things. But rather, what are the important things? God, how do I spend my time in prayer today focused on you? How do I lean into your power and your grace? Can I be a loving presence in the world? Who will you present to me that I can speak to in a positive way, in an encouraging way? You know, those kinds of things I think we should be praying over. And those be the plans that we make. I plan today, O oh Lord, to be your active presence. I plan today to speak goodness and life into the world. I plan today to bring joy and a positive air, air of what you are doing in the world around us. I plan to be a voice for your goodness and your vision for all. I plan to be a voice for your forgiveness and your salvation. How do we make those kinds of plans and pray that God be active in them? So I'm going to encourage you to think about what you've planned for today, the week to come, and beyond. And where have you prayed about those plans? Lord of love and mercy, teach us how to pray and rest in you. Give us our daily bread and help us not to be anxious for the things of the world, but rather to be centered in your love and your grace. In Christ we pray. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for being here today. Appreciate all of you. Hi, Marie, again. Glad you were watching today. Hello, Linda. Glad you came a little early today as well. For those of you that watch this at the normal time or maybe later on, again, don't forget, leave a quick comment. Let me know that you were present. Would appreciate you doing that. I hope you enjoy the rest of your beautiful Friday. God's rich grace and peace be upon you. And I'll be with you again tomorrow for our devotion time. Thanks, friends.